So here we have it, the brand spanking new DJM A9 from Pioneer DJ. This is the latest in the premium four channel club mixer range. Today, we're gonna to have a quick look at all the new features. We're gonna be comparing it to the 900 Nexus 2, the previous model. Gonna run through some new effects, this new big color screen, wireless capabilities, lots of more IO and upgraded sound. There's lots to talk about, so let's get to it. As with previous updates, we're looking more at a series of tweaks and refinements rather than a complete redesign. That's great because it makes the mixer still feel really familiar. If you've been playing on the 900 for a long time, as many of us have, you'll feel really quite at home with the A9. First thing you'll notice is it's bigger. Now there's a lot more control on the front panel, but also you'll find that it is a perfect match to play alongside the CDJ3000. Now the 900 Nexus 2 was released in 2016. The CDJ3000 late 2020, what a time to release DJ gear, yikes. But now we're seeing the mixer update to match. The faders are upgraded, um, new mechanism, I believe it's the same as what's in the V10. Crossfader also is upgraded, it's now MagVal 3. So it is controlled by sensors rather than gears. It's quieter and a bit slicker. The 900 Nexus 2 did not have a booth EQ. I'm really pleased to see the introduction of one on the A9. The EQs are very similar to those on the 900, but the crossover between mid and high has been brought south a bit. So when you're in isolated mode, you can carve out a little bit more of your sizzly top end there. Okay, let's talk about the ins and outs on the mixer quite literally. So USB, we have the addition from USB-B to now also having USB-C on both inputs. We now have wireless capability. So Bluetooth can be paired and you can run Bluetooth through any of the channels that you choose, which is great because you might have something sent to you last minute, you need to drop into your set. You can also, of course, apply effects on your Bluetooth audio because it's coming through one of the regular channels. The other wireless inclusion is that we have a Wi-Fi. There's an antenna on the back here that you can you know, remove if you're not using it, but it is a really useful addition. It works with the Stagehand app, which is forthcoming from Pioneer, to be run on an iPad. Now, this is useful for a whole range of functions. It's going to be great for front of house engineers, for installers, for club owners and managers, and also for lighting people. It means that you can monitor the channels that are playing. If someone's hitting the red line really hard, you can pull it back. You can also see what uh, waveforms are running on the CDJ. So if you're a lighting designer or operator, you can it really help you time your lighting effects to the music that's been played and also what's coming up. For front of house, it's fantastic because you can stream audio to the mixer, play the demo tracks that you want to play and hear out in the room without having someone up here having to hit play. You can also play a sine wave through it or a noise signal. So that's a really big addition. On the back panel, connectivity is largely the same. It's just had a little bit of refinement to the layout. One thing that's a really cool new feature though is that the IEC, the power cable, has a locking function on it. Now, I don't know if you've been moving a mixer around adjusting things in a console at three o'clock in the morning when it's dark and bumped out the power lead. I've certainly seen it happen. It's not a great deal of fun. So I think that's a really cool new kind of pro feature that's been added. With the A9, we see a significant improvement in sound quality from the 900. On the 900, we had a combination of 24-bit and 32-bit sound. The A9 is working with a new chipset. It's 32-bit for in and out. That's gonna give you more dynamic range, higher headroom, more detail in your sound. There's also new design and componentry, both for the microphone preamp and for the two headphone amplifiers. And speaking of headphone amps, let's talk about a dirty great big feature, which is on the A9, which is not on the 900, and that is the dual Q system. So now two DJs can be playing Back to back, both have their headphones plugged in and can be independently queuing different tracks. 
Both of the Q systems are identical. You've got level, mix, mono split, which I personally love for split queuing, and link queue, which is a feature that was available on the 900, but most people slept on it. I certainly did. When it came out, it did work with Rekordbox on a laptop, but not on any of the players. The CDJ3000 is the first player to natively support Link Queue. Link Queue allows you to be playing a track off the CDJ, but also be queuing up a different one, basically previewing it. You can maybe put it in your tag list. Fantastic feature for two DJs playing a back-to-back -back set. I'm really looking forward to seeing this one out and about. Both DJs get a quarter inch and an eighth inch output. Headphones B is on the front and headphones A is on the top. Nice little side feature. If you weren't using the mixer in a setup where you were gonna do back-to-back -back sets, you could flush mount it if you like and you're still gonna have the A headphones coming out of the top. Moving on to the mic channel, there's loads of new features here. The first being the inclusion of phantom power. So you can run a condenser mic if you like. Haven't seen that on a DJ mix before, that's really cool. There's also dedicated effects, echo, pitch, and megaphone for this channel, as well as a dedicated reverb. So you can run them in combination. You can still run them through the beat effects as you could on the 900, but now you've got dedicated effects as well. We can choose from effects like echo, like echo. Add some, Add some reverb. Pitch could be used to comical effect. Or it could be something pretty scary. With megaphone, you can sound like the KLF. One of the absolute champions of any DJM mixer are the effects sections. So we've talked about the new microphone effects. On the 900, we had beat effects and sound color effects. We have both of those on the A9, but we've got some new bells and whistles in there as well. Okay, let's start with the sound color effects. Super popular, you get different effects either side of the top notch there. What they've added here is a center lock, which you can turn on or off, but when you've got it turned on, when you go to one side and twist the other way to go home, it will lock at midday. Once you're there, you can actually turn it the other way, turn it back hard, it'll go to midday. Now this is great coming in and out of transitions. You can build up an effect and then get home when you wanna drop the beat again. Now this is a mechanical effect. You can even engage it and disengage it when the mixer is turned off, not that you'd need to do that, but it's pretty damn impressive. And I don't know how it works and I'd love to. I'm really quite tempted to pull the mixer apart and find out. And over to the famous beat effects section, which you'll be really familiar with. Very similar to what's on the 900, but we've got our new color screen. We can see a little more of what's going on. We've got three new effects, triplet filter, triplet roll, and Mobius, which works as a riser effect. The X pad here is a single line, whereas on the 900, we had two rows here. The channel select has now been changed from a rotary encoder to buttons, really easy to see and select which channel you wanna use. Probably my favorite new feature in the beat effects section is around the effects frequency selection. This was available on the 900, but now the effects selector remembers which frequencies you want to affect. Let me explain. So I don't want to affect the low frequency on my echo. So I've deselected that. When I go to helix, maybe I want to use everything except the high it remembers. So when I go back to echo, it doesn't affect the low. When I go back to helix, it doesn't affect the high. So 
So there you have it, just a quick peek at some of the key features in the latest in the Pioneer DJM Dynasty, the A9. After many years of faithful service, the DJM 900 Nexus 2 is now retiring. It's officially retired, actually. It has been a trusty steed for many years, and we do thank you, but the A9 has brought some new features to the game. Of course, it pairs beautifully with the CDJ 3000 or three or four of them. I really look forward to this being the new standard when you walk into a club console. We will have these on demo in all of our locations. You can click the link below for more information or do come in and visit us, have a chat and have a play. Check out the new DJM A9.